The DuPont Cavalcade of America. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you its radio adaptation of Dale Unson's popular story, The Day They Gave Babies Away, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. on the Cavalcade of America. Now, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Good evening. Christmas morning will find many little girls happy and in love with their brand new dolls. Many of these dolls have lifelike skins, as soft and smooth as a real baby's. They can be bathed without being hurt by soap and water. That's because many doll manufacturers have used neoprene, the rubber made by DuPont. Other toys made of DuPont neoprene will also rate high on Christmas morning. There's Poochie, the pup with the whimsical look. Clever little animals in gay colors. Play balls and bright balloons. Neoprene toys can be sterilized in boiling water without becoming soft and gummy. This helps keep them clean and free from germs. Neoprene chemical rubber is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Claude Jarman, Jr., who won the Academy Award for his portrayal of Jody in The Yearling, appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Sinclair Lewis's Cass Timberlane, starring Spencer Tracy and Lana Turner. Now, The Day They Gave Babies Away, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. as Robbie on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. This is a true story. It happened to a small boy. His father was dead, and he lived with his mother and his brothers and sisters in a small town on the Fox River in Wisconsin. And the boy's name was... Robbie. Robbie? Yes, Mama? You'd better clean this lamp tomorrow. I can't see where I'm stitching. Gee, you ought to go to bed, Mama. I've got to finish this shirtwaist for Miss Runyon. Oh, crow face? Now, that ain't a good way to talk, Robbie. Well, I hate Mrs. Runyon. Miss Runyon was very kind to give me this sewing to do. Yeah, she sure lets you know how kind she is, too. You think she's giving us charity or something? No, that's just the way she is, Robbie. She means well. Oh, my. Will you pick up that spool of thread for me, dear? Thank you. Mama, can I take a job at the logging camp up to Berlin? The cook said he'd take me on as a helper. Not till you finish the sixth grade. Oh, that won't be before next spring, if I pass. You know your papa wouldn't want you going to work without an education, Robbie. Well, neither would papa want you sitting up all night long sewing for old crow face. Robbie. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. How about Saturdays? Can I work at the camp on Saturdays? Well, it'd be a big help if you would, Robbie. A mighty big help. Mama said I had to practice, Jimmy. Oh, I'd like to hear Kirk play. That shows what sense you got, Annabelle. Can't you do the woodshed, Kirk? No! Oh, I'm in the woodshed. He fell down. Well, pick her own, Elizabeth. I didn't push her. You kids. Come on, Jane. Up you get. Oh, you're Robbie outside. Yeah, he's a good Robbie. I heard him first. No, I did. I heard him first. She did, not I did. No, I did. All right, all right, you both did. Now, let me in the house. Hi, Bob. Hi, Kurt. How much did you make today, Rob? Same as last week. How's chances on taking me next Saturday? You're too young for this work, Jimmy. I'm only a year younger than you. Two years. A year. All right, a year and ten months in. What's the difference? Well, it ain't two years. Will you take me next Saturday? Mama needs you around here, Jimmy. Where is she? Mama's laying down. Does she feel bad, Annabelle? She's tired. She's laying down. Well, I'm going to tell her I'm back. Mama, I'm awake, Robbie. Do you feel all right? I'm a little tired, that's all. I can work full time at the camp if you'll let me, Mama. I think you better finish school, Jimmy. 
I'm Robbie, Mama. Are you sure you're all right? I'm tired and got a little upset stomach, that's all. Do you want me to get Dr. Delbert? Got no money to spend on doctors, Robbie. All I need is a night's sleep. Well, good night, Mama. Good night, Robbie. to get Dr. Delbert. Well, I... I think she'll sleep for a while now. What's the matter with the Dr. Delbert? Typhoid fever. That's bad, ain't it? Your mom is a very sick woman. A very sick woman. Do you understand, Robbie? You mean... She might not get better. Well, we can always hope. But I want you to come a-running if there's any change. I'll be here every morning and every night to see her. But in the meantime, you better get Mrs. Driscoll next door to come in and take over. She's gone. She's down to Armo visiting her daughter until after New Year's. You ought to have somebody. Oh, we'll get along. I'll stay home from school. You kind of like that, don't you, boy? Yes, but not on kind of mama. You're a good lad, Robbie. Well, Mrs. Delbert will be over every now and then to look in on you. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. All right, now. We're all going in to say hello to Mama. Is she better? Well, she knows me this morning. Mama's been delirious. Dr. Delbert said so. Now, don't you go saying anything to her about it, Annabelle. Is Mama going to be well for Christmas? And don't go asking her that either. Come on. For Pete's sake, somebody wipe Jane's nose. Want Mama to see her like that? Shh. Now, here we are. Hello, Hello Mama. Mama. Hello, children. Are you better, Mama? I guess so. Are you being good children? Sure, Mama. Annabelle took my hair ribbon. I did not. You did too. I did not. You two cut that. Mama don't want to hear about no hair ribbon. We're all getting on fine, Mama. I've been practicing. I'm learning a piece for Christmas. That's nice, Kirk. Jane talked. She said dog. Say dog, Jane. Oh, Annabelle, Mama don't want to hear Jane say dog. Not now. Do you want to sleep some more, Mama? Isn't it time for school? School's over, Mama. It's supper time. Oh, I wondered why it was so dark. Come on, we'll let her sleep. Is Mama going to be all right, Robbie? Sure, sure. Come on. Robbie? Yes, Mama? Robbie, you stay. Yes, Mama. Robbie, I'm going to die. No, you ain't, Mama. I can tell, Robbie. You mustn't go grieving because there won't be time. I'll get Dr. Delbert. No, not yet, Robbie. First, I gotta tell you what to do about the children. They're all nice, good children, Robbie. You gotta get decent homes for them. Understand? Yes, Mama. I guess six is too many for any one family to take, so you'll have to break up. I want you to see they all get homes where get the same kind of love they had here. I will, Mama. You're all used to brothers and sisters. Better try to find families with children of their own. You won't be so lonesome for each other. I'd better get Dr. Delbert. No, no, wait. Tyler's and the Raidens are good people, too. The Raidens like Jimmy a lot. And then the... Oh, I can't think. None of 
us have to go to Mrs. Runyon's, do we? I don't want any of you going where you won't be happy, Robbie. Not if you can help it. You've got to decide who's right and who isn't. Now, don't let anyone else tell you. You ought to decide, remember. I will, Mama. You watch out for the others. Go and see to it as often as you can. They're taken care of. And, Robbie, get a good place for yourself. Promise me. I'll get along all right, Mama. Don't worry about me. I know you will, Robbie. It was such a touching funeral, Dr. Delbert. Oh, but those poor little children, Mrs. Runyon, whatever will become of them? Yes, those poor children. Well, I guess we'd better get the boys in here. Oh. Well, Bob, Jim. Did, did you want us, Dr. Delbert? Uh, come in, Bob. We want to talk to you and Jimmy. Yes. Yes, sir. Now then, <clears throat> it's not easy to say, boys, but... You once and children will have to be put out for adoption. We know that, Dr. Delbert. I'm afraid we can't expect any one family to take on six youngsters. We don't. We've been figuring out what folks might be talked into taking one apiece of you. Now, there must be six families in this town to whom duty means more an inconvenience. There's the McDonald's, for instance. There. Excuse me, Mrs. Runyon. You mean to be kind, I know. But I'm the oldest one, and Mama said I was to decide where we were going. Oh, why, you're just a little boy. Well, just the same, Mama said it was my responsibility. That's ridiculous. How could a child your age be expected to know what's good for children? Doctor, I say we should decide here and now where these young'uns are to be packed off to. Well, you may be right. Look, Dr. Delbert, tomorrow's Christmas, and it'll probably be our last chance to be together on Christmas. Now, would you please go away and leave us alone? And the day after tomorrow, we can decide about this. I don't see why we don't settle things right now. To be together on Christmas isn't very much to ask, is it? No. No, you're right, James. That's not very much to ask. Well, we'll see you boys day after tomorrow. Uh, coming, folks? Jimmy, I want to talk to you. Cop plays that good, don't he? Yeah. What do you want, Bob? As soon as Kirk and the girls are in bed, we got to make a list of the families in this town who'd appreciate children and raise them right. Why don't we do that tomorrow? We'll be calling on the people then. But you told Dr. Delbert you'd wait until the day after. I know that. But Mama told me I was to decide. And they won't let me. You heard, Mrs. Runyon, so we can't wait. Besides, tomorrow's Christmas. We ought to be able to get just about anybody we want to take us in on Christmas. <laughs> You are listening to The Day They Gave Babies Away, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. We continue as a small boy named Robbie is seeking homes at Christmas time for his five orphan brothers and sisters. It's uh, one o'clock. Mr. and Mrs. Tyler and their two small boys are seated at the dinner table for their Christmas dinner. And give us grace, even as you have given us this food we thank you for. Amen. Can I have the wishbone, Pa? Uh, you and Bruce can pull it between you. Somebody's knocking on the kitchen door, Ma. 
Well, I'll see who it is. Who on earth could it be? Everybody should be home enjoying their dinner this time of day. Hello, Mrs. Tyler. What? What, Bobby Unson? And one of your sisters. Uh, well, I thought you'd be with the Bradleys or the Delbert. Oh, come in, come in. I'm Annabelle. Yes, yeah, she's my sister, Annabelle. Look who's here, Howard. Why, Bob and Annabelle. Good, good. You'll have Christmas dinner with us. And we won't take no, will we, Emma? We certainly will not. Begging your pardon, Mrs. Tyler. But I was wondering... Well, that is, Jimmy and I were wondering that... Well, if you didn't need a sort of sister for Howie and Bruce. Annabelle here is a good little girl. She'd be an awful lot of help to you. She's... Well, that is, she was learning to sew... She can wipe dishes and she knows her ABC. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, N, X, Y, Z. Uh, Howard, it's Christmas. We've got to. Mm-hmm. Well, you think you're going to like living at our house, Annabelle? Oh, she'll like it a lot, Mr. Tyler. She likes anybody that's good to her. We'll be good to her, Bob. I guess you and I know each other. Sure. I know you, Mr. Tyler. I'm cold. I can't help it, Elizabeth. The partners want home. We gotta find Bob. I'm cold. Hey, Jimmy. Here he comes now. What's the matter? When the potters take her? They've gone away. Oh, now what'll we do? We can't keep her out much longer. She's getting blue. How about the corners? They live close. Somebody's coming in a corner. Hey, look. It's old man Stevens and his wife. What about them? He's a school principal. Oh, Elizabeth won't care. She's a girl. But they haven't got children. Maybe they don't like them. The only way to find out is to ask, Jimmy. Mr. Stevens! Oh, Mr. Stevens! Whoa, whoa, whoa there, whoa. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Stevens. Uh, hello, Robert. I was just coming to see you. You were? Well, Mr. Stevens and I have just been over to your house. We wanted to see if there was anything we could do. There is, ma'am. Well, that is, it's quite a lot to ask. But, but I thought that since you and Mr. Stevens didn't have any children, that, well, you might like to take Elizabeth. That's her. That is she. Take her? You mean... Well, sort of a doctor. She doesn't look very pretty now, but you'd learn to like her. Mama and Papa did. She's quiet. I'm cold. Uh, usually. Uh, Mama never had any favorites, but if she had any, I guess Elizabeth would have been the one. Wouldn't she, Jim? Sure. Wouldn't you, Elizabeth? I'm cold. Look, Frank, her eyes are like yours. Yeah. So they are. So they are. She's a little hard to understand at first. She lips. But you get used to that. <laughs> you bet we'll get used to that. All right, young lady, you crawl right up in this cut. Oh, get under this robe here, darling. That's it. There we are. Well, you boys come and see us whenever you can. Whenever we can. Bye. 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 Did you see that? Elizabeth jumped right into Mrs. Stevens' arms as if she'd known her all her life. I think she never had a mama. Kids forget awful fast. Yeah. Bye. Hey, here's Kurt. Bob, I've been looking every place for you. Mrs. Runyon's at the house. Says she's going to take Jane. Well, we do, Bob. We'll just tell Mrs. Runyon that she just can't have her. Come on. Stop crying, girl. I'm only trying to get your coat on. You can't go out in weather like this without it. Oh, stop it, I say. Mrs. Runyon, what are you doing? going to take Jane home with me to live. My conscience is after me all night. You can't have her. Why not? It's my duty. I'm sorry, Mrs. Runyon, but Jane... Jane's already promised. Who to? Well, nobody you know. I know everybody in this town. Well, these folks don't live in this town. By They're who? way up to Berlin. Whose authority are these children being disposed of? Mama said I was to decide. Are you starting that talk again? You're just a little boy. I don't care. You can't have Jane. Well, I'll see the sheriff about this. Nobody's going to deprive me of my right to do my Christian duty. Now, you wait here. I'll be back. Jimmy, we got to get this thing set up quick. Come on. Kirk, you better get over to the Kramers. They're expecting you. I don't want to go. You like it at the Kramers. Miss Kramer's got a banjo. You can play duets with her on your fiddle. I want to stay with you and Jimmy. Oh, now, don't be a crybaby. Annabelle and Elizabeth didn't cry. Well, bye. 
Goodbye, Kurt. What are you going to do with Janie? Take up to Berlin like I told Mrs. Runyon. Berlin's 12 miles. I'll skate up the river and pull Jane on the sled. You're going to stay up there, Robbie? Uh-huh. I'm going to work up there. There's a logging camp just five miles out of town. Think they'd have some work for me? Now, you know Mama wouldn't like it if you didn't at least finish the sixth grade, Jimmy. You go to the Raidens like we figured. Talk to them yet? No, but I don't have to. They'll take me in. Mrs. Raiden's always said she wished she had a boy like me. You like them all right, don't you? I like them all right. Well, then what's the matter? All those girls, Adelaide, Mildred, Penelope, and more. I can just hear them. This is on no further. Ain't he cute? Well, ain't you? No. Well, guess I better get over to the Raiden's. So long, Janie. Get up. She said dog again. Did you hear? Yeah. She said it fine. Will you skate down once in a while, Bob? Sure. Every chance I get. Now, see, you don't start wearing dresses with all those girls around. You shut up. Well, so long. So long. And now, Jane, you're going to have a nice, long sleigh ride. <laughs> Jane, those men got a fire. They're fishing through the ice. Hey, mister, how far from here to Berlin? Eight miles, kid. Thanks. Getting colder every minute. You'll never make it. We'll make it. We got him. Don't cry, Janie. We only got a few miles more. Anything's better than living for cold face. <laughs> Wake up, Jane. We made it. It's Berlin. Now we'll find you a nice place to live. Somewhere on the street, there ought to be a home just right for you. Look, there's a house with a Christmas tree inside. And if they've got a tree, they must have kids, Jane. Let's take a peek in their window. Nice folks, Jane. They've got two boys and a little girl. That's just about right. Let's go on. Well, for mercy's sake. Please, ma'am. I wonder if you'd like to have a baby. Well, that's the story. They all got homes. And when the last and smallest of them, Jane, was safe in the hands of the Clarys, Robbie said goodbye and walked up to the lumber camp in the woods where he became a helper, later a logger in his own right. He uh, always kept tabs on his brothers and sisters, though their lives took them far apart. As each grew up, he took on the characteristics and absorbed the points of view of his foster parents. But there was one thing that was notable about them. There was always something uh, uh, poignant in their love for each other because they had nothing but that love in common. But that was like having almost everything. star, Claude Jarman Jr., will return in just a moment, but first, we'd like to present the author of the original story we dramatized tonight, Dale Unson, fiction editor of Cosmopolitan Magazine. I'm very grateful, Mr. Hamilton. 
to the DuPont Cavalcade of America for broadcasting the day they gave babies away. I want to thank Frank Gabrielson especially for his understanding adaptation of my story for radio. I'm also more indebted than I can say to Claude Jarman and these fine players who made all those people come to life for me again. You will appreciate my reason for saying that when I tell you that I had a particular reason for writing this story and wanting you to hear it. Robbie was my father. Good night and thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Anson. Now, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Human nature being what it is, most of us are inclined to think now and then that we can do it better. Maybe we hear somebody sing a song, or maybe we look at something we've bought. Well, we say to ourselves, that's all right, but I'll bet I could do it better. Well, now, that's a healthy feeling. It's just because Americans have this competitive spirit that American industry provides the world with such an amazing variety of products, products which do get better year by year. For instance, not long ago, hairbrush manufacturers were faced with a problem. They wanted to improve their products, but lacked the materials with which to do it. Knowing this, the chemical industry set out to help them, all in the American tradition of doing it better. For improved bristles, brush manufacturers and chemical engineers said, the bristle we need must be sanitary. It ought to be stiff, but not too stiff. It must be springy. It must wear well and be easy to clean. And because some people brush their hair wet, the bristle must not take up much water. And the quality must be constant, always the same. The final answer was bristles made of nylon. But that was only half the problem. Now the manufacturers and plastics men agreed, we need a back that will hold bristles tightly. It must be light in weight and very strong. It must feel smooth and pleasant to the touch. It must be good to look at, too, and easy to keep clean like the bristles. The answer this time was Lucite Acrylic Resin. And today, a whole line of better brushes is on sale in stores near you. Hair brushes, shaving brushes, baby brushes, military sets for men, hand and nail brushes. Just for a reminder, they make wonderful Christmas gifts. There's a thought. For Christmas, a brush of nylon and lucite. Both developments of chemical science from DuPont. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. And now our star, Claude Jarman, Jr. I'd just like to remind you that this is the time of year we can buy Christmas seals. They help fight tuberculosis, you know. So buy Christmas seals. Your pennies will help save lives. Thank you. Next week, the Cavalcade of America will come to you from the stage of the Playhouse in Wilmington, Delaware, where we will present a special program of Christmas carols sung by members of the DuPont Chorus, who are employees of the DuPont Company. Join us next Monday night for a program of Christmas carols sung by the DuPont Chorus of 129 Voices on the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's story was dramatized by Frank Gabrielson based on the book The Day They Gave Babies Away by Dale Unson, published by Ferris Strauss and Company. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade of America is composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. Supporting Claude Jarman Jr. in tonight's cast were Sarah Fussell, David Anderson, Judy Loxer, and Lois Volkman as children in the Unson family. This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to our special program of Christmas carols sung by the DuPont Chorus on the Cavalcade of America and brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.